SpaceX's Starship has won the first commercial cargo and crew contract to the moon, despite never having flown before. You know, that's freaking cool, but when will it launch, and why is Starship so attractive? Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Any fans of Ray Bradbury or any other pre-space age science fiction would be familiar with the concept of daily rockets to the moon or other mundane space flights imagined by starry-eyed authors and readers. While we have reached the point of general public disinterest in ordinary space launches of satellites and such due to the regularity and relative safety of these accomplishments, we haven't yet achieved the milestone of fully reusable space vehicles, where the entire rocket ship is utilized as a whole structure over and over again, like a commuter rocket ship to the moon might be. While the Space Shuttle pioneered a reusable landable space vehicle that could be crewed, launched, and landed repeatedly, the largest part of the launch assembly, the external fuel tank, was not reusable, mostly burning up in the atmosphere. The solid rocket booster engines provided about 85% of the thrust at launch and for the first two minutes of ascent. After burnout, those SRBs were jettisoned and parachuted into the ocean, where they were recovered, examined, refurbished, and reused. Over 5,000 parts had to be refurbished for reuse after each flight, and this was an expensive, complicated operation. This makes it impossible for a private company to afford flight. Well, SpaceX's Starship program aims to change all that. Let's go over the key features of the Starship and see how close we're getting to a boringly reliable space commuter van. The SpaceX Starship is designed to be the world's first fully reusable space transportation system with the intent to carry both crew and cargo on long-duration interplanetary flights, helping humanity return to the moon and eventually travel to Mars and beyond. SpaceX claims Starship will be the world's most powerful launch vehicle ever developed with the ability to carry an excess of 100 metric tons to Earth orbit. By eventually refueling the Starship spacecraft in orbit using tanker spacecraft, Starship would be able to transport larger payloads and more astronauts to other Earth orbits, the Moon, and Mars. SpaceX is going to reach this with the first Starship orbital flight as soon as this month, and hopefully SpaceX will achieve its goal. And we know lunar rover developer Astrolab is definitely looking forward to this too. Last Friday, Astrolab announced it had signed an agreement with SpaceX for its Flexible Logistics and Exploration Rover, or FLEX, to be on payload on an uncrewed Starship cargo mission that will take off as early as mid-2026. This is SpaceX's first commercial cargo contract to the lunar surface, said Jarrett Matthews, the founder and CEO of Astrolab. Honestly, Astrolab would be just one of the customers sharing the voluminous cargo compartment of the Starship flight. Matthews, an engineer who previously worked at SpaceX and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, founded Astrolab less than four years ago. Located a stone's throw away from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, it has about 20 full-time employees, he said. Although the Soviet Union in the 1970s and more recently China have landed robotic rovers on the moon, the U.S. has yet to send any. Next year, NASA is sending its Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or VIPER, which is to search for water ice in the lunar south polar region. That is the area astronauts will explore in the coming years as part of NASA's Artemis program. By contrast, Astrolab's moon trip is, at least for now, an entirely commercial venture with no financing from NASA. Matthews declined to say how much it would cost to get Flex to the moon or how much money Astrolab has raised. He said Astrolab would make money by lifting and deploying cargo for customers on the lunar surface. That could include scientific instruments. In the future, the rover could help build lunar infrastructure. Essentially providing what I like to call last-minute mobility on the moon, Matthews said, you can kind of think of it like being UPS for the moon. And in this analogy, Starship's the container ship crossing the ocean and we're the local distribution solution. A robotic arm on the rover can help set up the payload on the surface. The mass of the rover and all the cargo is more than two metric tons. The Flex rover is a bit larger than NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars and much faster with a top speed of 15 miles per hour. Matthew said Astrolab already had several signed agreements for payloads. 
That appears to be part of the expanding potential market for Starship. SpaceX plans to use it for launching its second generation of Starlink internet communication satellites. Two flights that are to go past the moon but not land have already been chartered by wealthy space tourists. Musk's long-term dream is for a fleet of starships to carry settlers to Mars. For NASA, a starship is how its astronauts will land on the moon during the Artemis III mission, currently scheduled for 2025. Before that, SpaceX is to conduct an uncrewed flight to demonstrate the capability of spacecraft to get to the moon and set down there in one piece. If those schedules hold, the commercial cargo mission with the Astrolab rover could take place next year. This isn't the first time a private has floated the possibility of using Starship to launch a payload to the moon. Last year, entrepreneur Dennis Tito announced that they purchased two of a dozen seats on the second of SpaceX's planned circumlunar flights later this decade. With a public announcement, Akiko Tito becomes the first woman confirmed to fly on Starship. The flight will last about a week, outbound to the moon, passing within about 40 kilometers of the surface and flying back. Ten other seats on Starship remain unsold and are available. Tito said he was not at liberty to disclose the price he paid. This brings the manifest of private human space flights on Starship and its Super Heavy Rocket to three. There is billionaire Jared Isaacman's Polaris 3 mission, likely the low Earth orbit, which will be followed by Japanese billionaire Yasaku Mazawa's Dear Moon flight. That's the first human Starship flight around the moon. Then comes Tito and the second circumlunar mission. SpaceX is also contracted with NASA to fly the first human landing on the moon as part of the Artemis program. But for now, NASA astronauts will launch on a separate rocket and rendezvous with Starship in lunar orbit to go down to the lunar surface and back to orbit. The timeline for all these missions hinges on the development of the Starship vehicle, which may make a debut orbital test flight in the coming months from South Texas. After that, the large fully reusable launch system will fly dozens of uncrewed missions, mostly carrying Starlink payloads before humans climb on board. This is because Starship will make a propulsive landing back on Earth, something no crew vehicle has ever done, and has no backup should there be some sort of landing failure. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.